Hello and welcome to Screwy Loops and today we are kicking off a brand new series called A Beginner's Guide to Roller Coasters, teaching you everything you need to know about rollers that coast. I don't think that's quite the technical term for it, that's why we're running through the A to Z of geeky terms and elements and learning a thing or two on the way. So with that, you're watching Screwy Loops and this is A to Z of geeky terms and elements part 1. A is for airtime. Airtime is a sensation of flying out your seat and one of many reasons enthusiasts giggle like a little girl. Often caused by steep drops or airtime hills, this sensation can vary depending on the apex of the hill or speed in which you travel through it. Floater airtime is usually created by larger, more drawn out hills taken at a moderate speed. This is a sustained form of airtime which can keep you out of your seat for a few seconds at a time. Ejector airtime on the other hand is the result of shorter, sharper apexes often taken at much greater speeds. Ejector is an intense pop of airtime, which will really throw you out of your seat but is usually short lived. B is for blackout, haha <laughs> well that's a throwback. A blackout is a temporary loss of consciousness typically caused by a high level of sustained positive G force. These high G moments are often found at the bottom of large drops or more commonly large helixes. This happens because your blood pressure reacts to these high G moments and when not enough blood is reaching your brain then you just conk out. It may sound scary and dangerous, however this is a perfectly normal occurrence, but if you experience blackouts more often than you don't, then it may be worth checking out with the doctors. C is for Cobra Roll. The Cobra Roll is one of the most common inversions found on roller coasters today, which first appeared on Sea Serpent at Maury's Pier in 1984. The Cobra Roll is easily identifiable thanks to its well cobra head shaped resemblance. Even though many say Cobra Rolls are an inversion, theoretically they are classed as two inversions since you are fully inverted twice throughout the element. This can often cause confusion when counting total inversions on coasters, but just your roller coaster database is just easier. You initially enter a half loop, two back to back half corkscrews and then exit once again through another half loop. These are normally used as an exciting way to switch back direction throughout a layout. D is for dive loop. Another inversion most commonly found on B&M coasters is the dive loop. The first dive loop was discovered on a Togo Ultra Twister coaster in Japan's World Food Festival back in 1988. This coaster was very short lived, only lasting 4 months before being relocated to Rizutsu World in 1994. Dive loops typically begin by swooping upwards before twisting out into a half loop style element. Riders often experience a short burst of weightlessness at the top before quite literally diving down the half loop into a general serving of positive G's. This can be visually impressive, especially on larger B&M coasters, but equally a bucket load of fun. Have you experienced a dive loop yet? Let us know in the comments below. E is for ERT. Chances are you've probably heard this phrase thrown around a lot, whether it's in a vlog, on the Alton Towers app or in a coaster group, and you're probably wondering what does this ERT actually mean? ERT stands for Exclusive Ride Time, but can also be known as ERS, which means Exclusive Ride... Sexiness? I don't actually know what that one is, but comment below if you do and I'll pin it to the top. ERT is a period set aside by a theme park to allow exclusive access to a particular ride, or in certain cases multiple rides. Attending an event created by an established roller coaster club, for example Coaster Force, will usually have some sort of ERT planned, but parks also do this for annual pass holders, or even if you're staying on site. So look out for that magic word, ERT. F is for friction. Friction is naturally the resistance to motion of one object moving relative to another. Think back to the time you hit the school disco dance floor showing off your skid moves whilst jamming out to S Club 7. You're flying about the dance floor at blistering speeds, or some of a kid can barely skid one inch. Why? That's because that dumb kid is rocking his favourite Rockport shoes whilst you're skidding away in your blessed cotton socks. Friction. And those Rockport shoes are the equivalent to putting square wheels on a roller coaster train. It simply isn't going to move just like that kid. Most roller coasters are powered by gravity and everything from the materials of the wheels and structure of the track determines how much friction is at play. Think of it like a balancing act. Not enough friction will make the train fly far too fast and too much won't make it move at all. And of course things such as brakes and launches also manipulate the amount of friction acting on a coaster too. G is for G-Force. No, not that operatic power pop group from the first series of X Factor. I'm talking about G-Force, a true force of nature, a force to be reckoned with and just forcefully fantastic. You get the gist. 
G-force stands for gravitational force, effectively the force of gravity acting upon an object or in this case the rider. As you are most likely sitting down on the sofa right now, you are currently pulling a whopping 1G, which is the default force reading of planet Earth's natural gravitation. If you are currently watching this video on a Hus Enterprise during its cycle, you are probably peaking at around 3G as you swoop down towards the Earth's surface. These are positive Gs but you can also experience negative Gs and lateral Gs respectively. Negatives often happen during drive and air time hurls whereas laterals occur on launches or when you are forced sideways during tight turns. H is for Heartline Roll. Get an inline twist, wrap it in pastry and sell it at your local Greggs. No, it's not quite like that. There is rather a significant difference between an inline twist and a Heartline Roll. Picture it like this, with an inline twist the axis sits pretty much centred on the track itself, meaning you would travel through the inversion like this. These elements only really work on wing coasters, inverts and flying coasters since it's extremely unnatural for a standard sit down train to execute this. Instead, sit down coasters opt for the heartline roll. The axis on these elements sits slap bang centred to well your heart, meaning you would travel through these inversions like this, giving it a more natural and visually pleasing execution. These elements hold something special to my heart, I love them so much. I is for Im 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 this is officially the most difficult inversion to pronounce, whether you say it like Imelman, Immelman, or I'm Elman, you need to go see a doctor. It doesn't really matter because in the long run, we all know exactly what you're on about. This element actually has a lot of history and it dates all the way back to the early 1900s. It was originally an aerial combat manoeuvre which was used after an attack on another aircraft to reposition the attacking aircraft for, let me catch my breath, another attack. The manoeuvre was named after a German World War I Eindecker Flighter Ace Lieutenant Max Immelmann and the inversion follows the exact same path respectively. To keep this short and sweet, the Immelmann is basically a reverse dive loop and is commonly found on many BM coasters. J is for G Union in Okay, I get it. This one is a bit of a cop out, but I do think you guys could learn a thing or two from this. So, the Junior Immelman is the natural biological son of the original Immelman in inversion. My god, why is everything such a mouthful in this video? That was a pointless joke, so I kind of just wasted my time anyway. But, like the name, the Junior Immelman follows a very similar shape to the standard Immelman, but instead of inverting 180 degrees, the banking veers more towards 90 degrees, which causes many, many arguments between enthusiasts in whether to class it as an inversion or not. In fact, let's cause an argument right now. Comment below if you believe Icon's Junior Immerman should be classed as an inversion. Fire away. K is for kinetic energy. Now we get in sciency. There are two types of energy when a coaster is in motion, which are potential and kinetic energy. Potential energy is the energy an object has because of where it is in relation to other objects, whereas kinetic energy is what makes the objects actually move. On coasters, the potential energy comes from the likes of a moving lift hill chain. Potential energy is built by carrying the train higher and higher up a lift hill. Typically, the higher a coaster goes, the more potential energy will be created thanks to a larger drop following it. As most of you will know, the larger the drop, the faster you will go and the more kinetic energy which will be produced as you travel down. When you go up again, kinetic energy switches back to potential energy and vice versa. Physics in a nutshell. L is for launches. I'm sure we've all played around with Hot Wheels in the past, especially those which launch the cars into an incredibly twisty layout, which can only be compared to one of those spaghetti ball coasters from Premier Rides. Launches on coasters act in a very similar way to this, and there are multiple types of launches to send those trains flying. Most commonly today, many coasters opt for the LIM or LSM launch variants, linear induction motors and linear synchronous motor systems. Both use a form of electromagnetic propulsion to accelerate the trains. Hydraulic launch systems, on the other hand, use utilize a latch car and a cable to propel the trains at a high rate of acceleration. These are becoming less and less common, with Formula Rossa being the last Intamin coaster to be built to be to be to be, to be, to be built with one of these systems in 2010. Rarer types of launch systems on coasters these days consist of compressed air launches, friction wheels, flywheels, counterweights and traditional cable launches. M is for mid-course brake run. We all love those, don't we? Yeah. 
Something that may seem relatively unimportant, but in actuality plays a vital role within a coaster's layout. Mid-course brake runs can be found on many coasters, usually on those with longer ride durations and those with multiple cars and trains. At first glance, these don't appear to offer much more than a simple decrease in speed, but that is not the case. The biggest benefit of a mid-course brake run is an increase in efficiency. The more of these there are on a coaster, the more trains you can safely run at a single time, and obviously a much higher throughput in the long run. Take the Smiler for example, this coaster contains two mid-course brake runs in the layout, one after the short pre-ride section and the other just before the second lift hill. This enables two trains to simultaneously coast through the layout, whilst another loads up riders in the station and maybe hold one more sitting on the final brake run. N is for Norwegian Loop. The Norwegian Loop is one of the most unique elements in the roller coaster catalogue, showing up a grand total of three times across the globe. It was first introduced on Speed Monster, an Intamin accelerator which opened back in 2006 at a park called, bear with me, Tusen Threed? It gets the name Norwegian Loop simply from the origin of the original element, Norway. You initially enter a dive loop which is then followed by an Immelman, shaping the inversion we all know, or most of us anyway, as the Norwegian Loop. You can also find this element on Fahrenheit at Hershey Park as well as Helix at Liseberg. O is for Online Community. Equal parts scary as it is vitally essential, the online community is probably the most important thing about being an enthusiast in this current day and age. Make friends, maybe enemies, share videos, spread gossip, join groups, fangirl, interact, make your voice heard. Welcome to the internet of 2020, where would we be without it? Being the millennial that I am, I spent most of my teen years procrastinating on countless forums, Facebook groups and of course, YouTube. Oh how could I forget? There are so many avenues for you to venture into the online community. If you're watching this, you're probably part of it anyway, but if you're not, join us. P is for prefab. Don't worry, you're all fabulous. You may occasionally hear the term prefab thrown around from time to time, in which you're probably wondering what on earth it actually means. Prefab is not the stage before one becomes fabulous that does not exist. It is in fact a modern technique in roller coaster design which forges the flexibility of steel tubular composition with a classic wooden track. The full name for this is prefabricated track and is most commonly used on Intamin wooden roller coasters. It is first built in a factory and created by blending many thin layers of wood which are glued together, followed by some very precise laser cutting to shape out the track. The result is a far smoother finish overall, however many people argue that it takes away that wooden coaster personality you'd otherwise get on standard woodies. Q is for queues. Oh, oh the joys of being British, we love a good organised queue don't we? Whether it's for a pasty or a pint or three hours pissing yourself waiting for the Pepsi Max big one, it makes me so proud to be a British citizen. Queues come in all shapes and sizes. If you don't want to wait 90 minutes for Wicker Man, grab yourself a fast pass and cut down the queue. Obviously these come at a price, but some parks like Disney offer a reservation system free of charge. Which definitely has its pros and cons, and unhappy faces as you stroll past the simps in the normal queue. It's free god damn it. Some attractions allow for single rider lines, which again can cut down the length of time at the cost of sitting next to complete strangers. Prepare to hear the questions, have you been on this before, or is this scary is quite a common one too, in which you reply, absolutely f terrifying. R is for restraints. Without them, we'd probably be dead. Restraints are what keep you from flying out of a roller coaster and they come in all shapes and sizes. Fan favourite amongst enthusiasts would be the lap bar, minimalistic in design yet completely safe nonetheless. They provide a very exposed feeling of freedom, allowing for more upper body movement and unless you are pinned down to an inch of your butt cheeks, more airtime. OTSRs, otherwise known as over the shoulder restraints, heightens a sense of safety, probably a, a little too much. These are much more common on inverting coasters, however, companies such as RMC and Mac have proven that you don't need OTSRs to go upside down. Lap bars are the future people, you heard it here first. You've also got vest harnesses, motorbike restraints, seat belts, you name it. What are your favourite types of restraints? Let us know in the comments below. S is for SBNO. SBNO stands for standing but not oscillating. What? No. Okay, um, standing but not operating. Yeah, that's better. Usually when a train goes flying off the track, that coaster will become SBNO, standing but not operating. This means that said attraction will be closed indefinitely, occasionally closing for quite some time. In some cases, for 50 years. Did you know? We're living in a very special time right now, because earlier this year, 2020, there were more roller coasters SBNO than there ever has been, 
period. All thanks to something I can't say in case I get threatened to be demonetized. Silly YouTube. You can't even spell the word demonetized without the word demon, so burn. T is for put through. Ever looked at the queue times and thought, why has this coast got such a long queue but this one hasn't? Does no one love Nemesis anymore? What is wrong with you? The reality is many people do still love Nemesis, it just has a much greater throughput than the other attractions in the park, hence why it's always dead. Think of it like this, us riders are mere grains of sand within an hourglass. The size of the funnel represents a roller coaster throughput. The wider the funnel, the more grains of sand that can pass through. The higher the throughput, the more riders that can get on and in enjoy their ride. Makes sense? Probably not. Realistically, if a park wants to achieve a higher throughput on their attraction, they need to consider 1. How many trains can be operated at a single time? And 2. How many riders can the train accommodate altogether? Other factors include how quickly can they safely send the trains out, and how many mid-course brake runs are required to accommodate the amount of trains. Simply put, the higher the throughput, the lower the wait times. U is for up stops. Up stops are there to prevent trains flying off the rails and into outer space. Just like restraints, a coaster without up stops might as well be a three king hearse. These are a set of safety wheels which stop the cars from propelling off the track during intense movement. Believe it or not, there used to be a time where up stops were never a thing and coaster designers had to be super careful. Take a hill at just the wrong amount of speed and you'll be riding through the sky like Aladdin and Jasmine. Up stops were originally patented back in 1919 by roller coaster pioneer John Miller. Miller was also responsible for many classic attractions such as Black Bull's Big Dipper and Coney Island's Thunderbolt. Roller coasters were never the same again. V is for velocity. When a train accelerates during a launch, it goes fast. Pop from you, icon. Truth is, launches vary from coaster to coaster. The rate of acceleration is dependent on the technology used, friction, weight, and length of the train, you name it, and can often deliver very different results, regardless of max speed. For example, even though stealth is almost half the speed of Formula Rossa, that launch still feels more forceful, and theoretically it is. Stealth pulls 1.9 g during its 0 to 80 miles per hour launch, whereas Formula Rossa pulls 1.6 7G during its 0 to 149 mile per hour launch. This is calculated by the rate of acceleration or maximum velocity. Velocity is the rate of change of position with respect to time. So even though Stealth goes 80 miles per hour and Rosser goes 149 miles per hour, Stealth achieves a much higher velocity due to the length of time it reaches that max speed. This was a ball egg to explain, I hope it makes sense. W is for Walk On. The most beautiful combination of words known to mankind, hearing walk on whilst in a theme park is the epitome of excellence. It's God's way of telling us enthusiasts, you done good kid, this one's on us. The term walk on defines the exact moment when you enter a queue, keep walking through the queue, don't stop, keep walking, sit straight down on the train and away you go, as quick as that. Exit the train, enter the queue again, rinse and repeat. Treat a walk on coaster like personal ERT. People pay hundreds of pounds to eradicate the queue and book ERT for themselves. Only a fool would turn down this for free. Last year, me and Andy managed about 10 rides on stealth in the space of like 30 minutes. When you see that zero on the queue board, you know what to do. X is for X car. Not gonna lie, trying to think of something roller coaster related for X was nigh on impossible, so I just settled with X car. Cop out, I know. The X car is a type of roller coaster car you need to mow at AG. What makes this car particularly special? is its lap bar. Love it or hate it, these bulky lap bars provide an alternative to over-the-shoulder restraints, allowing for these types of coaster to invert for just as long as traditional loopers. Back when it was developed in 2003, it was completely unlike any other inverting coaster at the time. You could argue that it set the standards for modern coasters, as many companies today opt for a lap bar over OTSRs. Y is for YouTube. You're watching this video on YouTube, correct? If not, turn it off now. This video's clearly been stolen and re-uploaded into the logs of Daily Motion, if that's still a thing. Does anyone use that anymore? But seriously, don't give them the views. Thanks and good night. So YouTube is, in my opinion, the most important tool for learning about roller coasters. And chances are you've probably already subscribed to a tidy roster of theme park YouTube channels, like myself. Tidy. It's a never-ending labyrinth of POVs, vlogs, documentaries, and amazing stuff like this. <laughs> Click the card, you will not regret it. So lose yourself in the world of roller coaster YouTube if you already aren't. If you've come across my video by pure chance and you made it this far, my job is done. Subscribe.
Z, sorry, Z, it is for zero G roll. This is it guys, we have made it to the end of the alphabet and what better way to end this video with one of my all time favourite roller coaster elements, the zero G roll. The perfect marriage between airtime and inversion, the zero G roll is essentially a barrel roll put up on the pedestal of an ejector hill, creating a feeling of weightlessness known as zero G. Ha, surprise. The first zero G roll appeared on Six Flags Great America's Batman the Ride in 1992. The BNM invert which started it all, spawning a whopping 10 clones within its life cycle. The zero G roll became a staple element within BNM's library, showcasing their ability to create elements unseen until then. Today, the zero G roll is one of the more common elements found on roller coasters, and if you've been on a BNM looper or invert, chances are you have already experienced this fabulous inversion. And there we have it, the A to Z of Geeky Terms and Elements completed it mate. Just want to say a massive shout out to Callum Wells, he is a legend. And a huge thank you to everyone who subscribed and actively shared your support on the channel. You don't understand how much I appreciate that, so thank you so much. If you enjoyed this video then please hit the like button, smash subscribe for more content like this and flick the bell to keep all up to date. Videos on the left, merchandise on the right, make sure to hit that button for the ride of your life. You've been watching Screwy Loops, try a bit.